Today is a very special day. In the United States and in some places in the West, in Europe, today is called Fat Tuesday. Why is this day called Fat Tuesday? Because in many places, they hold carnivals. And when they hold carnivals on this day, carnivals, carne, 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 they eat all the carne that they can eat. Because tomorrow is the beginning of the Lenten season. My dear friends, Fat Tuesday is the traditional day or the traditional name for the day before Ash Wednesday, which is the first day of Lent. It is also known as the Mardi Gras, which is simply Fat Tuesday in French. It gets the name for the custom in many Catholic countries of marking the day today with feasting before the day of fasting begins. That is why this day is appropriately called Fat Tuesday. If you still have time, you can eat still the barbecue, the pork barbecue, or the chicken barbecue that you want to eat tonight. In any case, tomorrow is the beginning of the Lenten season. Even our altar is already beginning to be decorated with some Lenten symbols like the cross on my left, which is on your right. Tomorrow, many Catholics will go to church. Many of us would like to receive the ashes on our foreheads in order to remind us about the transient character of our life, about the temporary nature of human life. And we will hear from the priest either of the two formulas for Ash Wednesday. The first formula is, Remember man, that you are thus, and to thus you shall return. The second formula is, Repent and believe the gospel. I will not preach yet about Ash Wednesday tonight because the gospel today is equally beautiful. Why did I say that it is equally beautiful? You notice that the gospel today is asking a lot of questions. I do not know if you counted the number of questions in the conversation that transpired between the Lord and the apostles, they forgot to bring bread, enough for all of them. They were already on the boat in the middle of the Sea of Galilee when they realized that the bread that they brought with them is not enough. And so they began to worry about what they are going to eat. There is not enough food for everybody among themselves. My dear friends, that is why in the gospel today, the Lord asks several questions. Why do you suppose that it is because you have no bread? Do you still not see or comprehend? Are your minds completely blinded? Have you eyes but no sight? Have you ears but no hearing? Do you remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? How many baskets of fragments you gathered up when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000? How many full hampers of fragments did you collect? Do you still not understand? I'll get straight to the point. They did not understand each other. Or, more appropriately, the apostles did not understand 
what the Lord Jesus meant when he was talking about bread because Jesus was teaching them about bread on a spiritual level whereas the apostles were worried about the bread on the material level they remained on the material level they were still talking about what are they going to eat for supper tonight what are they going to eat for breakfast tomorrow what are they going to get for lunch tomorrow and for another supper tomorrow evening they were thinking about physical bread they were thinking about material bread they were talking from the material point of view but the Lord was talking from the spiritual point of view the Lord was referring to another kind of bread the spiritual kind of bread the Eucharistic kind of bread that we receive every time we celebrate the Eucharist that is why the Lord said to them have you forgotten do you still not understand how easily you forget ang dali naman ninyong makalimot hindi ninyo naalala yung pinakain ko limang libong katao ng ilang pirasong tinapay silang lahat na busog hindi ba ninyo naalala yung isa pang grupo apat na libo pinakain ko silang lahat na busog hindi ba ninyo naalala my dear brothers and sisters what is the point the point is simple in times of adversity God is remembered but in times of prosperity God is forgotten in times of hunger in times of pain in times of suffering in times of adversity God is remembered but in times of prosperity God is forgotten my dear friends similarly in our life it is as if Jesus is telling us a number of things like very often experience fills us with pessimism teaches us what we cannot do and teaches us to view life with a kind of resigned hopelessness but do you not remember we have other experiences sorrow came and we came through sorrow still standing erect do you not remember temptation came and somehow we did not fall do you not remember illness took us and somehow we recovered a problem seemed insoluble and somehow it was solved we were at our wits end and somehow we went on we reached the breaking point and somehow we did not break worries storms difficulties came we survived all of them there must be a God taking care of us there must be someone greater than us taking care of us but how easily we complain how easily we choose to forget my dear friends in Christ probably some of you will remember the beautiful reflection entitled footprints 
in the sand. Why is there only one set of footprints? Somebody was complaining. And the answer is from the Lord. There is only one set of footprints because it was then when I was carrying you. Do you not remember? Why do you so easily forget? In times of adversity, God is remembered. In times of prosperity, God is forgotten. But why worry? I remember seeing a poster, and this is my last point. I remember seeing a poster in a doctor's clinic many years ago when I was visiting my doctor for my regular checkup. And as I was waiting for my doctor to come and for the secretary to call me, I noticed a poster on the wall with a beautiful reflection. The title is, Why? worry i think that's the problem with many of us we worry a lot we do not remember the benevolence and the providence of god we easily forget okay going back to this reflection to this poster it's framed and it's hanging on a wall in a doctor's clinic the title is why worry there are only two things to worry about it says, I have memorized it because I like the message. Why worry? There are only two things to worry about. Either you are well or you are sick. If you are well, there is nothing to worry about. But if you are sick, there are two things to worry about. Either you will get well or you will not get well. If you get well, there is nothing to worry about. But if you do not get well, there are two things to worry about. Either you will live or you will die. If you live, there's nothing to worry about. But if you die, there are two things to worry about. Either you will go to heaven or you will go to hell. If you go to heaven, there's nothing to worry about. But if you go to hell, don't worry. You will have no more time to worry when you are in hell because you will see and meet many of your friends who are also in hell. Misery loves company, as they say. In any case, my dear friends, do not easily forget the good things, the marvels the Lord has done.